Again, if you want to calculate probability, then you need to know how to count things. So let's look at how let's look at a more formal way to count things than what you've learned in the past. Um, we'll use an example. And in this example, we ask ourselves, if you flip three coins, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, in order to actually count, we're going to use a, a method known as a tree. We're going to draw a tree diagram in order to count out how many possible outcomes. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So in using a tree, the first thing we say is, what are the possible outcomes if we wanted to um, flip one coin? Well, you could either have heads or tails. And then if we flipped a second coin, we could either get heads or tails for that coin, or heads or tails if we had flipped a tail for the first coin. Um, and then if we flip a third coin, well, each of these four guys down here has two more possible outcomes. We could either ha have heads or tails for the third coin, uh, or here we could have heads or tails for the third coin, or here we could have heads or tails, and so on. <clears throat> And in the end, we can count the total number of possible outcomes. In this case, there's eight total possible outcomes. Now, let's add some notes to this tree diagram so we can put this in terms of the vocabulary words we just learned. Here, our event one is what happens right at this level of the tree. We get heads and tails. And uh, that was what well, event one was flip um, the first coin. And then we also had event two. And event two gave us um, these extra outcomes, two outcomes for each of the first two outcomes. Um, and that was just the event two was flip second coin. It's good to have these notes so that we know what the tree means. And then there was a third event. It's an import and it's important that you know what what when you're talking about a word problem in probability, what are the events and how many are there and how many outcomes for each event. Event three was flipping the third coin. And by the time we did that, there was eight total possible outcomes. But I want you to make note of how many uh, possible outcomes there were for each event. Okay, um, For event one, and I'm going to abbreviate if you don't mind, event one, there was uh, two outcomes. We agree to that, that there was either heads or tails. Event two, <clears throat> event two itself only had two possible outcomes. Um, even though there was four total outcomes between event one and event two, event two itself only has two outcomes. And then event three also had two possible outcomes because we're just flipping a coin. So each of our events had two possible outcomes. Now we're going to look at other uh, situations where our events have different numbers of outcomes, but for now it's important to make note of which events we had, how many events we had, and how many outcomes for each event. Now I'm going to pose a question here. And the question is this, what if you flipped 30 coins? If we flipped 30 coins, then using a tree to count how many total possible outcomes would be quite a bit of exercise. So it turns out we have a rule that we can use to make it a little bit easier to figure out how many total outcomes rather than just drawing a tree. Now that doesn't mean you throw the tree away. We will still use it so that we make sure that we understand uh, the principles that, that we're going to use. And uh, sometimes using a tree really is the only way to visualize the path towards the answer. So, uh, 
Um, again, uh, if we have a really large number of events and outcomes, we don't want to make a big tree for that. So instead, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at something called the fundamental counting principle. In the fundamental counting principle, uh, it says you can find the number of outcomes of a sequence of events by multiplying the number of outcomes of each event. Well, let's take a look at our example that we just looked at for flipping the three coins. In that example, we determined that there was three events and that each event had two outcomes. So the way we would figure out the total number of outcomes, um, let's see here, is this way. Total outcomes. It's equal to the number of ways that the first event could occur times the number of ways the second event could occur times the number of ways that the third event could occur. And in this case the answer is 8. And you'll notice this is the same answer that we got by drawing the tree. However, if we had to flip 30 coins, this would be a way more efficient way to get the answer. And again, just so that we're clear where these numbers came from, the number of outcomes for event one, uh, well, let's start with this actually, um, the number of outcomes for the event three, that's that two, the number of outcomes for event two, that's that two, and the number of outcomes for event one, that's that two. So um, what we do is we multiply together the number of outcomes of each event to get the total number of outcomes for all of these events to occur in a sequence. Now, before I leave this example, there's a couple more things I want to go through. One thing is, is that these events are all independent. Um, the, the meaning of independent events is that uh, the, 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 when the outcomes occur for the first event, uh, they, they have no impact on the number of outcomes for the second event. And the same is true for the third event. All of these outcomes are independent of one another. In other words, if I had flipped a head and then a head, that has no influence on the outcome of the third event. And for that reason, these guys are all known as independent events events. All of these guys are independent events. The other thing that I want to do is I want to talk to you about another way of counting the possibilities. Again, you might not be able to go directly to fundamental counting principle. So uh, let's, uh, let's look at another way to count uh, besides using a tree. It's called using an organized list. Now, um, we're going to keep the tree in view, and we're going to learn this new technique called using an organized list to count the number of possible outcomes. Um, if we, in an organized list, the first thing we'll say is, well, geez, if I'm going to flip three coins, and, and we'll, we'll use the same scenario that we just talked about before, flip three coins. Well, what are the possible outcomes? Well, one possible outcome is that I get a head, and then a head, and then a head. Um, and then I'm going to make another column because I really want to be organized about how I make my list. Um, this column has all the possibilities where I have three heads. Um, but it, there's also a possibility that I could end up with just two heads. I could have heads, heads, tails. But I could also have in two, the two head column, I could have heads, tails, heads. And I could also have tails, heads, heads. All three of these outcomes have two heads. I could also have a possible outcome where I have um, just one head, heads, tails, tails, and again I could have tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads. Notice the organization of the list. Um, three heads, two heads, one heads, and then finally no heads at all. I could have just tails, tails, tails. These are all the possible outcomes of flipping three coins and you'll notice that um, again we come up we came up with eight possible outcomes.
the best way to get a feel for this counting thing is to try it yourself. So here's an example for you. You're going to try out. Um, here's the situation. You want to order a pizza and you must choose one each of the following. Toppings, you get a choice of mushrooms, pepperoni, or onions. Crusts, you get a choice of deep dish or thin. And size, you get a choice of small, medium, large, or extra large. And then here's the question. How many different ways could you order one pizza? I want you to try a few things on your own, if you can, um, but I'm going to give you a few hints. The first thing I'd like you to think about is what are the events here? And then the next thing is how many outcomes are there for each event? Right now it would be good if you took the time to list the events and the possible outcomes for each event. If you can do that, uh, pause the video for a moment and then I'll show you what I came up with. My take on this is that event one is choosing a topping and the possible outcomes include mushroom, pepperoni, or onion. Event two to me was choosing a crust and the possible outcomes were deep dish or thin. And event three to me was choose the size of the pizza and again the possible outcomes were small, medium, large, or extra large. Now. The next step in the challenge is to try to um, count out the possible number of uh, different ways you could order one pizza by using a tree and then try using an organized list and then ultimately we'll use the fundamental counting principle. Now make sure that you write out the tree and the organized list because I will be looking for those in your notes. It's nice if you know about the fundamental counting principle, but you really need to know how to make the tree and how to write the organized list. In a moment, I'll show you mine and we can compare. With this many possible outcomes, using a tree can get a little messy, but that's okay. It's going to be good practice for us. Um, first, we're going to look at event one. And in event one, there's three possible outcomes. Either we get mushroom or pepperoni or onions. Event two, there's two possible outcomes. Um, after we choose mushrooms, we're still going to have to choose either deep dish or thin crust. And after we choose pepperoni, we're still going to have to choose either deep dish or thin crust. And if we choose onion, we're still going to have to choose either deep dish or thin crust later. And finally, in event three, we're, uh, for each one of these types of crust, we're either going to have to choose small or medium or large or extra large. And I'm just going to draw the rest of them and then I'll be right back. Now, one of the things that I want to point out about this exercise is that, to me, the people who are most successful at probability are the ones who are willing to roll up their sleeves and do a little bit of work. Um, if all you want to do is try to figure out the easy way, you might not be able to get to the answer. Being able to just count out the possibilities is the most sure path to success. Now, in this case, after writing out all the possibilities, I can see that I've got four and four and four and four and four and four possible outcomes on the bottom, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six groups of four, so I end up with uh, 24 possible outcomes. 24 outcomes. Now, we're going to take a look at writing this out as an organized list also, again, just because it's a, it's a good exercise for something to do. Just going through the process of writing out all the possibilities is a good exercise, in organization at least. Um, let's take a look at one possibility. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tree as my guide. Uh, let's say that we start with M and then D and then S. Um, so one possible pizza could have mushroom, deep dish, and size small. Um, also I could have mushroom, deep dish, and medium, mushroom, deep dish, and large, and mushroom, deep dish, dish and extra large. So I'll go ahead and write these down. Um, medium, mushroom, deep dish, and large. Uh, 
mushroom deep dish and extra large and you can kind of see that there's a pattern to how I write these out um, the next thing we'll look at is mushroom and um, uh, with a thin crust so mushroom and thin crust and small and mushroom and thin crust and mushroom and thin crust and mushroom and thin crust and then we've got medium large and extra large now the the process that I'm using is known as a methodical process for writing out all the possibilities it's an important technique um, let's go down a little bit more and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna let you finish it off Um, let's go down the next path, which is pepperoni. So pepperoni could then have a uh, deep dish, and pepperoni and deep dish, and pepperoni and deep dish, and pepperoni and deep dish. And remember, pepperoni could also have thin crust. So if you begin to write out the pattern, you be can begin to see how many total you're going to have, um, even if you couldn't figure out how many events and how many outcomes originally. Um, when we go pepperoni and deep dish again we have four choices small medium large and extra large and that's true for the thin crust as well so in this way we can begin to predict how many total outcomes we're gonna have um, because we can see um, every time we go to a new topping we get eight more possible outcomes it's kind of interesting so uh, I'll let you finish this off with all the onion uh, all the onion possibilities And in the end, let's go ahead and use the good old fundamental counting principle. Um, if we wanted to do fundamental counting principle here, what we would do is we'd say how many are to total outcomes for event one, and there's three. How many outcomes for event two, and there's two. And how many outcomes for event, th uh, event number three, and there's four possible outcomes. And the fundamental counting principle says multiply together the number of outcomes for the entire sequence of events to get the total number of outcomes for those events to occur. Um, and so that'll be 24, the number that we counted with the tree and the number you should have come up with as an organized list. It's important that you know all three techniques. Again, this is part of my philosophy of Deep Woods math survival skills. Um, just memorizing some formula you've been presented with is not sufficient for you to answer new and strange questions you're being presented with. And let me leave you with one last thought here, is that I want you to realize that um, these events were all independent of one another. Um, the fact that I picked a particular topping did not necessarily affect the number of outcomes of choosing a crust. And choosing a crust didn't affect the number of outcomes of choosing a size. Now, with regard to the pizza example, some might want to debate me on that. Um, choosing a particular topping might influence a type of crust. But just for, for, for our sake, for, for the, the sake of this example, um, it, by choosing a topping, we did not change the number of outcomes for crust or the number of size. Uh, in, the, in another video, I'd like to look at dependent events, and we, maybe you could go back and forth and compare the two.